Hi guys, welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. It is November 5th, 2022. We are three days away from the election day and or cycle. And then of course you have AMC earnings coming out as well. On the weekend like this, I like to reflect because I don't really watch the markets too much during the week anymore. There's not much for me to look at until I see a catalyst or an announcement, but I do reflect on what we're doing. So I think back to DFB, you guys know that I've been investing into GameStop for almost two years now. At AMC, I did invest in at first, did some homework, ran away, tried to tell the world what's going on, like my hair was on fire, but people tend to not um, take, that, take it too kind. You know, they, they want to believe whatever someone else is telling them. So what I did was I'm trying to sit back here and think about this in a different light. Um, one is, you know, when you start first investing with like GameStop, and if you were listening to De Deep F and Value, right? If you're listening to Keith Gill, he tells you, he goes, it's a value investor. It's undervalued. But it wasn't that, you know, tickers were being manipulated. It wasn't that the stock, uh, you know, people want to complain about payment for order flow or they want to complain about um, whatever the stock market is doing, right? And I've said this, I said, it's, that's not the issue. You're trying to fight something like you're trying to run after a ghost almost. Uh, the manipulation of the market is not it. It's manipulation of the company that is my concern. You know, manipulation with Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, HYMC, and of course GameStop. But the things that root it from the evil are, you know, we got rid of our debt. We have zero debt. So that's actually a good thing for GameStop. Uh, for AMC, I don't think it's even possible. But I know why now. Like I actually did the homework and I was like, okay, I get it. There's distressed securities and distressed investing. And that's what you do when you look at companies that you feel are on the verge of bankruptcy and or are post-bankruptcy, right? Like you're looking for a way to get everything pennies on the dollar. So I'm going to show you it in real time. I'm going to show you the players that are involved. I'm going to show you the clips of them bragging and explaining on how they do it. I know how they do it. You guys want to know how they do it? I'll just tell you really quick is they put people on the board. They get people in there like the BCGs and of course like Mudrick, Mudrick Capital is sitting on the board of directors for HYMC when they bought them out of bankruptcy, took them to SPAC, brought them, brought them whole, 16 bucks a share, all the way down in one year to 24 cents a share. Can you imagine how many people made money along that, that trend line? And then you have to think about how they pumped it up to you just to sell it off again. It's been um, you know, listed for D-list. It's been uh, the file, it's been filed twice now that they'll be delisting off the NASDAQ. So is it true? Well, we'll see if they can find another pump somewhere. But beyond the fictitious news of them doing good things, I read it and I've seen it in all the interviews that I'm reading about um, distressed investing. And it says that the longer the recovery takes, the better it is for them, right? Obviously, they're making money off the interest off these loans. And I call them shark loans because even if you pay them off early, like I was showing someone on the last live stream, uh, they have the make whole premium. So it, there's always a line in there that's going to tell you, you're going to pay more than what it's worth. You're going to pay, you're going to pay extra. No one's just letting you borrow money for free. Even if you were to pay it off early, you're still paying a premium of some kind. And it's all in the fine print and I've showed it to you. We will go over the SEC filing of the uh, quarterlies coming up for quarter three for AMC on Tuesday. I'll break it down line by line. Well, you know, I read the damn thing. You guys should read it too. Uh, but let's go ahead and look into what we're talking about right now. Over this economic downturn that's now, that is happening right now, the previous 10, 12 years were uh, a green light. Low interest rates, companies overextending themselves, borrowing as much money as they could because it was free, essentially, 2 to 3% borrowing money. Right now, interest rates are sky high. No one's going to give you a loan. I don't care what company you are, and if they are, they're going to do what they did to AMC, get you at 15%, get you at 12%. And people think these are good things. The longer it gets pushed out, the better for them because there is no path to recovery. If you look at Mudrick Capital specifically, they have negotiated and or uh, manipulated three pump and dumps that I've seen, that I've found. One is Thrive, one is AMC, and then the next one is HYMC. So they're going down the list of what it is, and unfortunately, a lot of people are getting manipulated out of this. It has nothing to do with market mechanics. It has nothing to do with what everyone wants you to believe. FTDs, is the reports, nothing. It has everything to do with manipulating from within. That's how you do distressed investing. So we'll go ahead and look at it really quick, just so you guys can get the overview. 
Um, I'll show you the videos. We'll go over that in a minute. But right here, distressed securities are experiencing financial and operational distress, default, and or are under bankruptcy. Um, they do this with the possibility that these such securities render worthless, zero recovery. And why do they do that? Because certain hedge funds are short, yes. But it's the hedge funds that no one's talking about. It's the small ones. It's the mid cap. It's people under the radar. You should. You guys all want to get to Ken Griffin. You all want to get to Steve Cohen. Those guys are laughing because they're telling you, how can you come and get at them for a company that is so small? A billion dollar problem is not their problem. Five billion dollars is not their problem. That's why. That's why these little hedge funds are the real predators, the real wolves of Wall Street. And it's a guy like Jason Mudrick here. So we're going to go ahead and talk it out with him. We're going to let him talk, actually. Uh, I'll play the video, and you guys get all the info you need because you're going to get a good vibe for who he is and what he is, and I'll, and I'll run it back. Jason, we're 10 years into an economic expansion. Many of the largest credit managers have raised billions of dollars for distressed debt investing, but they aren't putting it to work because they say they can't find anything to do. I've seen an HSBC document that shows your fund up 28% year to date. And while I know you can't talk about your returns because of SEC regulations, that suggests you're finding things to do. What? We are. Um, I think there's a common misperception that there's not a lot to do in distressed. While everybody acknowledges there's going to be a lot, what you need to understand is the market has gotten so large because interest rates have been so low for so long. So when you hold interest rates low and you have good economic growth, companies borrow. I think that's what the SEC wanted. Um, it's what's happened. And if you look at our market, so look at levered loans and high-yield bonds, it's doubled in the last 10 years. Okay, if you add in the triple B uh, slice of the investment grade market, that's gone from 700 billion to two and a half trillion. It's now 50% of the investment grade market is triple B. And levered credit, so junk bonds and levered loans have gone from 1.3 trillion to 2.5 trillion. So you have five trillion dollars just in the US of opportunities to look at. So while we're still in an economic growth and expansionary economic environment, there's a big market and there's lots going on. Right? Companies get in trouble for company-specific reasons. Industries have headwinds for industry-specific reasons. Some industries are cyclical. Uh, so this is not sort of an economic downturn-driven opportunity set, but there's a lot going on underneath the surface. Outside. So think about that. What he's telling you is there are companies out here that are distressed, that are pushing it because industries are changing. We know that the gaming industry was changing at the time for GameStop, and they have revamped, pivot, and transitioned into e-commerce, and then of course the NFT marketplace and blockchain. So yes, they have expanded uh, in-store, and they're doing better in-store, and they're doing better cultural-wise, but they also have zero debt. So they cleared the debt, and they cleared out any possibility of something like this happening. Uh, what you haven't done on the counter side of the other stocks that we're talking about is you can't get rid of them. And here's why. You have an economic downturn in combination with distress, in combination with now plants. And it's everything, guys. It's everything you want it to be. It's the worst thing in this world if you are invested in these companies right now that have influence or have been influenced by Mudra Capital. Um, I'm going to show you another clip really quick, and it's going to kind of give you a vibe of what they are. This is a minute long. It's not long at all, but it's worth watching because you're going to see how they do it. It's exactly what I'm telling you. There's also one other thing I'm not saying, but I'll, I'll get to it right now after this clip. Nominally well. Uh, the most interesting things out there are in the, are in the small mid-cap space. Um, and the size of our funds allow us to continue to invest in those kind of opportunities. Um, we're in a benign default world, um, and you know, as I talked about earlier, we, we're very much focused on uh, the, f the, f the future opportunity set, which will be driven by an economic downturn. Um, a lot of what we're, where we're spending time is actually restructurings that happened five years ago where we now own the company, mm -hmm. we own the new equity of the company, and we either control the business or you sit on the board of the business and have significant influence. We're spending a lot of time trying to exit those positions, which is usually a sale of the company or an IPO of the company. We're in an environment right now where the private equity universe is very, very robust. There's about a trillion dollars of committed private equity capital globally right now looking to be put to work. 
So if you're folks like us that own post-bankruptcy equities, you should be selling into that market, not buying into it. So a lot of our uh, efforts right now are monetizing positions and gearing up for the next distress cycle. So you should be selling into that market, not buying into it. The reason they tell you this, guys, is because in this market, no one would buy in. Now you know why insiders are not buying in on their own company like AMC. Now you know why Mudrick exited 25% of their position on HYMC. Uh, they, are, they understand how to play this pump and a dump. They are wolves. They are that. The other part of this that no one talks about is how companies during this last 15 years, 12 years, were covey light. So whenever they were borrowing money, the covenants didn't matter. The covenants weren't strong enough, weren't, weren't impactful enough. So they were borrowing money at, at basically non-risk. Right now, as you look at it, these are covey heavy. So the covenants are going to put pressure right where it hurts. This is why AMC brought out APE. I've told you the covenant of holding said senior loans for AMC is $144 million. That's how much cash they must have on hand. If they ever go under, here comes the bond. Now, those bonds, the, the issuers or the holders of those bonds can file and force you to do a Chapter 7 or Chapter 11. In this case, you would need a huge cash influx from somewhere and someone. AMC couldn't sell shares at $2. They did. They sold at $2 each to Mudrick in December of 2020. I do not want that for AMC, and I do not want that for anyone. So if you guys think that they're going to have this economic rebound or quarter four is going to be great, I'm going to warn you now the cash burn is, is substantial. Uh, quarter one of next year, and you know that. And it's going to put you on the verge of bankruptcy. I know that you don't want to hear that part. I know Adam Aaron's told you it's taken it off the table for now. But there is no way you are going to survive two years of the type of operational leases that you have on that company. AMC has un, non, I should say, non-cancelable leases. They cannot cancel leases. This is why they can't shrink their footprint. This is why they bit off more than they can chew when they bought $2 billion worth of movie theaters in 2016. He said it verbatim. We own companies that made mistakes five years ago. Now they own them right now. And why do they have them? They have them by the balls, right? For the lack of a better term. So I want you guys to do the homework that I'm doing, and then you'll know where you need to invest or what you can do to get out of this. Um, for me personally, I just keep buying GameStop every damn dollar I have because it's debt free. That's the way I'm rolling. So if they ever got crazy in debt and I saw, you know, the, the predators coming, the vultures coming, they're hovering, but they can't do anything because we're literally okay. When it comes to HYMC and people are telling you it's a seven year play, it's a five year play, they're going to make money eventually, things like that. Mudrick's still in there. And I'm telling you right now, go watch all the videos Jason Mudrick ever put out. He goes in there bragging. We have the best lawyers in the world. We read all the lines. We understand it. We know when a company can't recover. That's what you have. So there's a reason why they bailed out AMC and laundered the money back to themselves at HYMC. They just go from one to the next to the next like locusts, and you're left holding the bag. Good luck, guys. Do your homework. And if you want to go ahead and Google it, it's distressed credit, distressed investing, and not distressed debt so much. But you guys do some homework, please. I can't be the only one. GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop. GameStop. I'll see you around, millionaires. Make better decisions, please. See you guys.